Dragons by John Foster and Corky Paul, read by Harry Enfield and Sandy Toxvig. Welcome to the world of dragons. This is Spikey, the little green dragon. He'll be your friend as you explore. This is the dragon's lair. To go there, click on this tunnel. This is the fiery dragon. Click on the words to hear the song, or click around the screen to find hidden surprises. Clicking on Spikey brings you back here. This is the library. To go there, click on this door. To select a poem, choose from the large bookcase. To have the poem read to you, click on the words. Use the spike on the tail to move through the poem. To go back to the library, click on the end of the dragon's tail. Clicking on Spikey takes you back into the dragon's lair. To come back here from wherever you are, Press the spacebar. To quit, click on the knight's helmet. I might go for a swim later. Is There a Dragon in the House? by Julie Holder I visited a castle one summer afternoon. I didn't want to join the crowd, so I wandered off alone, over the creaking drawbridge, past the tower keep, and in a courtyard, on the cobbles, I came upon a dragon. Yes, a dragon, fast asleep. I could see that it was sleeping, and not a ghost or dead, for I saw it gently breathing, and it flicked its heavy ears against the flies that buzzed its head. I tiptoed up to touch it, uh, for curiosity and proof, and its scales were rough as the bark of a tree and thick as tiles on a roof. Then the crowd came round the corner, and the crowd's guide said, uh, And it's here in this very courtyard that a knight fought a terrible dragon, and the dragon dropped down dead. The dragon opened yellow eyes. It yawned and stretched and blinked, and over the heads of the guide and crowd, it looked at me and winked. Oh, no, not dead, the dragon said. That isn't dragon law. But no one else there heard it speak. No one else there saw. As sure as grass is green, the dragon said. As sure as daisies grow, dragons do not die. They simply come and go. They come and go as surely as heroes in tin will dent. Then it grinned and waved its tail, and then the dragon went. The crowd moved on behind the guide, through a narrow castle door. They clattered, scuffed and tripped the cobbled courtyard floor. But none of those feet rubbed out the print, the print of the dragon's paw. The print of its paw on the cobbles, left behind to show that dragons do not die, they simply come and go. This story is for dragons, for I've never thought it right that dragons should be invented to make a hero of a knight. The Grateful Dragon 
by Raymond Wilson. A dragon crawled to the castle door, and everyone inside looked down on it from the castle walls, curious but terrified. It was half the size of a football pitch, bright green with spots of red, but it hadn't the strength to lash its tail and lay there as if dead. The winter had turned the woods to iron, the snow was deep as a house. There wasn't a blade of grass to be seen, nor a skinny harvest mouse. It's starving, the king cried. Now's our chance, looking down from the castle wall. Bring lances and crossbows and arrows, and let's kill it once for all. The dragon was too weak to move, more than an eyelid, and yet the princess saw a tear form there, and it moved her heart with regret. Please spare the dragon, the princess begged. Put out some bundles of hay. Once it's grown strong from eating, it will harmlessly go away. The king looked hard in his daughter's face and saw how much she cared, then nodded that they should do as she asked, and so the dragon was spared. Next autumn brought enemy soldiers. The king and his subjects shut themselves in the castle, and there they starved while the harvest stayed uncut. The princess wept on the castle wall, when suddenly there came, in a whirlwind of thunder and fury, the dragon spouting flame. The enemy soldiers ran off in fright and never again were seen, and the people came out of the castle and gathered the harvest in. The Dragon by Daphne Lister I saw a cloud like a dragon lying in wait in the sky with a purple head and a purple tail and a little blue patch for an eye. From his snout came flames of fire and he began to run chasing the daylight away to the west and fighting the setting sun. The Lonely Dragon by Julie Holder He lives in the mouth of a mountain, behind the teeth of mist. He sighs at the thought of the nights he's not fought, and the maidens he never has kissed. He sprawls in a nest of treasure, plays five stones with rubies and pearls. On the back of his paw he wipes his nose, and idly on his rattling toes the crown of a king he twirls. He belches and scratches his belly. He is bored with before and behind him. He spits sparks to the dark and sings rude songs. His roars shake the mountain tops like blancmange, but only the spiders mind him. Rusty and forgotten lies his tin opener for nights, with broken sword, torn castle flags, and bits and bobs in bags and bags, and he longs for electric lights. He dreams of music and fairgrounds, fizzy lemonade and chips, of supermarkets, cars and roads, of Wellington boots and designer clothes, and sherbet dabs and dips. He thinks of a small townhouse with a telephone in the hall. He'd like to rub noses and talk about roses with neighbours over the wall. He will not come down from the mountain, for dragons are none, or few. He won't leave his lair, he just doesn't dare, for fear he will end in a zoo. <laughs> The Ice Dragons by Eric Finney They tell of polar dragons who breathe frost instead of fire with icicles nine along their backs each one a glassy spire in the eerie light of that endless white where bleak winds always blow they make their homes neath icy domes in everlasting snow and when these dragons gather this is the tale that's told. 
They stand in an arctic circle. They breathe, and the world grows cold. The Last Dragon by Ian Larmont. Beneath a high mountain, inside a dark cave, a crusty old dragon, as cold as the grave, as cold as the high, vaulted stone overhead, as cold as the gold that is spilled as his bed. The last of the dragons, there will be no more. And slow beats his heart on his glittering stall. The beating gets slower as life drifts away. A hundred more lifetimes just pass as a day. At last, a low moan where there once was a roar. The last of the dragons is breathing no more. How Dragons Hide by Julie Holder. Dragon babies are fat and pudgy. They slide down the helter skelter of Mother Dragon's back. They swing on her tail. They pull faces at themselves in the mirror of her scales. Dragon babies bibble and babble. They blow smoke bubbles. They dribble small flames. They suck sun hot pebbles and crunch them in sharp little teeth. Dragon babies play with jingly jewels. They leave them where they fall to become buried treasure. They throw them in the river to see the splashes. Dragon babies clap their small wings, pretending they are old enough to fly. They roll in the river mud to make small clouds of steam. Their mother lies like a low green hill and watches over them. If they hear the sounds of people, they hide in the long green grass. Still as stones they lie, their mother hides her head and becomes a low green hill. They hold their fiery breath, and the people pass, seeing only stones in the grass, and a low green hill. The School for Young Dragons by John Foster. At the School for Young Dragons, the main lessons are. Flying and feasting and fighting. In flying, they learn how to take off and land, how to dive and to swoop, how to loop the loop, and how to leave trails of skywriting. In feasting, they learn about how to behave when invited to dine in an old dragon's cave. They learn that it's rude to gobble your food, that you should not belch fire. That you must always sit up straight and never ever scorch your plate. In fighting, they learn how to scare off their foes with jets of flame that will singe their toes. How to puff a smoke screen so they cannot be seen. How a knight with a lance hasn't much of a chance against dragons who know how a whack of the tail can shatter chain mail. At the school for young dragons, the main lessons are flying and feasting and fighting, which is why you will hear a young dragon say, "Our lessons are really exciting. It's better than reading and writing." Lost and found. By Lillian Moore, lost, a wizard's loving pet, rather longish, somewhat scaly, may be hungry or upset. Please feed daily. P.S. Reward. Found, a dragon, breathing fire, 
that flails his scaly tail in ire, would eat twenty large meals daily if we let him. Please come and get him. P.S. No reward necessary. Drawback by Clive Webster The dragon raged with flame and fire. He blew it down his nose. But the poor old soul was quite cross-eyed and burnt off all his toes. Portrait of a Dragon by Moira Andrew If I were an artist, I'd paint the portrait of a dragon. To do a proper job, I'd borrow colours from the world. For his back, I'd need a mountain range, all misty blue. For spikes, I'd use dark fir trees pointing to the sky. For overlapping scales, I'd squeeze dye from bright anemones. I'd gild his claws like shining swords with starlight. His tail would be a river, silver in the sun. For his head, the secret green of forests and deep seas. And his eyes would glow like embers in a tinker's fire. But I'd keep the best till last. For his hot breath, I'd use all reds and Yellows, crocus, saffron, peony, poppy, geranium, cyclamen, rose, and fierce orange flames from a marigold. No Contest by Clive Webster the little boy was in distress. Dad! He yelled. Quick help! A fiery dragon's just got Mum! She's fighting it herself! Don't worry, son, his dad replied, ignoring his son's pleading. The dragon's in with half a chance and carried on his reading. Dragon's Breath by Irene Rawnsley One winter, when the world was still, a dragon came into the cold. He rattled all the icicles and shook his scales of gold. He spread his body on the earth to make the flowers grow. He snorted with his fiery breath and melted all the snow. He snorted with his fiery breath to set the river free. He coiled his golden tail around a budding hazel tree. He coiled his golden tail until catkins began to shake, then spread his wings and flew to warm another world awake. Dragon Birth by Judith Nichols in the midnight mists of long ago, on a far-off mountainside, there stood a wild oak wood. In the wild, wet wood, there grew an oak. Beneath the oak, there slept a cave, and in that cave, the mosses crept. Beneath the moss, there lay a stone. Beneath the stone, there lay an egg. And in that egg there was a crack. From that crack there breathed a flame. From that flame there burst a fire. And from that fire, dragon came. What about you?
chimney. With a sulfur smell, the air grew hot as a dragon steamed on the used car lot. Genuine skills! A spiky tail! The notice said, This beast for sale! Belches flame in a crimson sheet! It guarantees a steady heat! Uses a heater or a torch Warmer than a blacksmith's forge And recommended by St. George Well, I bought the beast What else to do? Now you should see my barbecue! Shiver me timbers, we be pirates.
<laughs> the name's Dick Dragon. Private Eye. My mum gave me some money to buy myself a treat She said I could buy anything so long as it wasn't sweet So off I went to spend it, I wandered round the shops I couldn't find a thing to buy Then something made me stop There in the pet shop window I saw a flash of fire I saw some scales and burning eyes that I knew my heart's desire I gave the man my money, he handed me a lead Then I walked out of the pet shop with the only pet I need A pet with wings and gleaming fangs, with skin that's shiny green With claws and a tail that's longer than any tail you've seen A pet whose breath is orange flame Whose ears both hiss with steam Who'll fly me to the land of clouds And to the land of dreams But first I better go home I hope that it's okay I hope my mum will like my pet I wonder what she'll say
Thank you. I hope he doesn't set my mum's washing on fire. <laughs> nice, isn't he? Oh, he's got horrible breath. I wonder what he eats for breakfast. Anything he wants, I suppose. It's the best in the land The Dragon Band There's Granada on recorder Got her on guitar
Whoa, whoa, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Wing a ding, ding, da. Why am I frog like a leggy, like a doodle bow? Shake like a doodle, shake like a Pow, pow, wee, wee, wee. Pow, pow, poo, poo, poo. Shake like a leggy, like a doodle, shake 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 like a doodle, Wing a ding ding da. Why am I frog like a leggy like a doodle bow? Shake like a doodle, shake like a Shibidi bip bop boo.
Have I missed anything? <coughs> Have they been on yet? <coughs> do you do requests? <coughs> Have I missed anything? There's a dragon in the classroom, its body is a box, its head's a plastic waste bin, its eyes are broken clocks, its legs are cardboard tubes, its claws are toilet rolls, its tongue's my dad's old tie, that's why it's full of holes. Ooh, what a lovely dragon! Our teacher smiled and said, you are a pretty dragon! She laughed and stroked its head. Oh no, I'm not! He snorted. Not that. He moved his jaw and chased a screaming teacher along the corridor. <laughs> One, art. Period two, history. Period three and four, double maths. Oh, yuck! Simpkins! <laughs> Come back here, you stupid boy! To drag on or not to drag on? That is the question. <laughs> The dragon that I see before me. Hey, bye. Come here. Goodbye. Hey, bye. Come here. Goodbye. I've been stuck down here for 
ages. Dum dum dum. Bum 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 bum. I must not scare the teacher pretending to be a dragon. I must not scare the teacher. <laughs> Could you tell me where the dragon band's gone? Could you tell me where the dragon band's gone? Have you seen the red dragon? Have you seen the green dragon? Must not pull <laughs> Jennifer's pigtails. <laughs> I must not pull <laughs> Jennifer's pigtails. <laughs> five times six is um, thirty. Five times seven is um, thirty-five. Five times eight is forty. <laughs> Those kids. Those kids. I've been stuck here for ages. I've been stuck here for ages. Those kids. Who said I'm made of rubbish? Those kids. Who said I'm made of rubbish? Oh, yum, yum! Ooh, yummy. I'll have some of that. <laughs> Ooh, yuck. Cool, what a smell. Who's the teacher's pet? Are you going to eat that apple? Have you done your homework? Give me a copy! It's just like a real dragon! It's just like a real dragon!
creepy crawlies! Yuck! Spiders, how horrible! Look out! Oh, I say, duck! I see you arrived. The dragon said, bright eyes like beacons set in his head. Yes, said the bat. Left as soon as I knew. Now tell me the problem. A touch of the flu? My flame has gone out. I can't raise a spark. Not much use when you hunt in the dark. Black as a chimney and reeking of soot He threw in some petrol, a match to ignite Firelighters, coal and some dynamite The dragon covered a burp with his paw A flicker of flame flashed down his jaw He licked his lips with a golden tongue Take your fee, vet! You'd better run! I can feel my fires boil! They are returning in a couple of minutes! You could be burning! Clutching a diamond the size of a star, the vet scampered away to his car. As he drove off, the dragon's bright fires gushed out of the cave and scorched his tires. The vet snapped his fingers, laughed at the brute, because he was wearing his flame-proof suit! Are you leaving? I seem to be rooted to the spot. I'm a dragon of leaves Growing up into the endless sky If you want to be near me You will have to fly Dooby dooby doo wa hiya boo! Shoobly dooby doo wa wow! Dooby dooby doo wa hiya boo! Shoobly dooby doo wa wow! Who's making all that noise? Hello, boys and girls. This is my bridge.
are better than one. I'm absolutely starving! My dad. 
Jocelyn, he's something of a joke. For Jocelyn is very tame, he doesn't like to maul or maim or breathe a fearsome fiery flame. He's much too smart to smoke. And when I take him to the park, the children form a queue and say what lovely eyes are red as one by one they pat his head and Jocelyn is so well bred. He only eats a few. <laughs>more fun than my tiger. I've got the best pet in the park. He's much more fun than my tiger.
Dragons! <laughs> 